Uh, I'm Abhishek Bagusati uh, from Performance Engineering Group at uh, Argonne Leadership Computing Facility. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about the DPC++ in a different setting uh, for Perlmutter. Uh, first, I would like to acknowledge Jeff Larkin and, and Johannes to, uh, who has laid the groundwork for much of my talk, in fact. So, uh, Further ado, uh, I'll talk about data parallel C++ programming model for specifically uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs and and uh, and more practical case Perlmutter in this case. So uh, I'll I'll start with a different node here, which is uh, Sickle, as many of you have heard uh, uh, this keyword. Uh, it's 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 a specification, it's a language specification from the Kronos Group. Kronos Group uh, handles the specifications for OpenCL, OpenGL, and, and and many other uh, models. So Sickle is one of that, and I would like to emphasize that Sickle is not a programming model, but it's a language specification. And I'll get in uh, in, in a bit how Sickle and DPC++ are related to each other. So uh, long story short, Sickle is nothing but, uh, 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 as I said, like a language specification, which carries some of these features, which uh, have uh, similar heuristics like OpenCL binding. So anyone familiar with OpenCL might see uh, exactly same keywords appear in Sickle. Um, the, the, the salient feature with Sickle is it's a C++ single source programming model, which means that both host and the device code coexists. And when I say device code, I'm not really referring to the GPUs. It could be anything. It, it could be GPUs, FPGAs, DSPs, etc. cetera. So, uh, so long story short, the single C++ source code runs on, on, on host and the devices. Uh, and, 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 uh, and there's a, and a memory model here, which refers to a USM and a buffer model. So, uh, I'll give brief uh, examples later in this uh, session uh, about uh, what are the differences between these memory models. Uh, the, the, the biggest advantage between these two is we, uh, one offers a lot more control over the memory transfers and other does, does that job for you. So, so that's, the, the, that's the stark differences. Uh, and like any other GPGP programming model, take CUDA, HIP, um, uh, OpenCL, uh, Sickle. I mean, this is like the fundamental feature that one would request. So it carries a synchronous programming model where you just overlap, compute, copy, host operations, and 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 to just maximize uh, the performance and reduce the time to solution. Uh, coming to the most important point, it, it offers portability. As I said, like it it initially. Uh, is a single C++ source code, which can run on host and GPU devices, but it could run on any hardware, not just uh, initially uh, designed for Intel GPUs, which was uh, clearly the motivation, uh, but it could run on, on NVIDIA and AMD GPUs as well. So, uh, and, and let's not forget about productivity. So how many lines of code do you write? What is the biggest uh, performance uh, gap that you see with a native programming model, for example, CUDA? So I'll, I'll briefly touch based on those points. Moving on, uh, the title, uh, coming to the title of the talk, the data parallel C++, this is nothing but an Intel's one API implementation of Sickle. As I said, Sickle is a language specification and vendors have the freedom to take that specification and implement it and provide tools for us. So DPC++ is a programming model, which is an implementation of Sickle. And you could view it as another way that it's just a mixture of C++ and some Sickle standards with some extensions. So these are the three components that forms DPC++. So as you've heard in the morning that uh, the C++ is getting evolved as a parallel uh, uh, modern uh, programming language since uh, C++ 17 ISO standards. So uh, one of the, the fundamental uh, restrictions of Sickle is C++ 17 compliant. Uh, as I was earlier saying that it is based off of modern C++ and, and the most important feature is the cross architecture uh, 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 standard. Moving forward, uh, 
so I, I just talked about C++, Circle, but there is a, another piece called extensions. These are the extensions that the vendors implement for anything uh, uh, coming from productivity, uh, uh, ease of use, performance, anything like uh, related to those. And some of these extensions were fortunately adopted by the SQL standards recently. Uh, so the, the goal is all these uh, uh, implementers of SQL standards develop their extensions. And if, if they prove uh, to be uh, more uh, useful to the open community, the LLVM community adopts that. Uh, uh, and, and the goal is just to open source it to the LLVM upstream. And, and more importantly, these extensions were closely observed by the SQL and the Kronos uh, working groups. So it's, it's, it's a quite a collaborative effort and, 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 a, uh, and, a, and a good feedback loop. Um, as I was just saying that SQL is a portable programming model. Um, it's a specification based off of I so 17 standards, uh, backed up heavily by the industry. Um, it's, it's open source. And, and then it's a single source programming model. So there are several libraries that are built up on SQL based off of C++. The, the, this is a flowchart of simple, and, and I'll just make it uh, simple that it just has two layers of uh, uh, compilation workflow, one for the device, one for the CPU. If it goes through the device, it chooses a SQL compiler, chooses what our backends, OpenCL targeting all these devices or other backends, you could choose CUDA, HIP, uh, anything that just targets those devices. So, and 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 there is another option for traditionally uh, for the CPUs as well. So this is just a simple compilation workflow. If you if you take a SQL programming model, I'll just talk about uh, the compilers, uh, vendor players that are active in the space, and 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 mostly focus on the leftmost one, which is Intel DPC plus plus implementation. There are other uh, active contributors uh, such as CodePlay, uh, Hipsicle. On the, on the DPC++ side, you just have like several uh, uh, devices, each going through its own plugin. So Intel GPUs goes through the level zero plugin, NVIDIA with N, uh, NVPTX and AMD with the GCN. So DPC++ just provides a portability layer for SQL and then targets all these devices. So what's the story with the uh, SQL at NERSC? So there has been a co collaboration between ALCF, NERSC and CodePlay uh, but to enable uh, NVIDIA A1, uh, SQL on NVIDIA A100 uh, GPUs. So the initial scope of the work is vastly completed, um, but uh, th uh, there is also a good bit of tracking um, for the libraries as well, uh, so, because any uh, scientific uh, endeavor requires a good support from the compilers and the libraries uh, to have a good uh, uh, seamless uh, uh, portability story. Um, so yeah, you could check out this uh, module here, and and SQL uh, uh, at NERSC, uh, there is a there, there has been a training event that happened in March. Uh, there is a pretty good material uh, training material that one could just uh, look at. Uh, it's 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 self evolving. Uh, so uh, feel free to check this out. Uh, and I'll just talk about some of the heuristics of SQL. Uh, People who are familiar with the CUDA or HIP, it, it, it has a very similar uh, uh, equivalence. Uh, so I'll talk about SQL queues and context uh, as abstractions. So SQL queues are just a mechanism to provide work to a device. Think of it that way. And SQL contexts are nothing but like a CUDA context, which everyone overlooks at it. And the same cases with SQL. So uh, SQL queue is like a handle that you submit uh, job to it, and then and then this uh, this just uh, dispatches the work to the host or device. So uh, to be brief, context is nothing but like a like a coup context, if, uh, loosely speaking. Uh, these contexts provides a mechanism for resource isolation or sharing. So whether you want to share the memory with the next GPU or 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 not. And, and queues are nothing but like a CUDA streams, uh, which most of you are familiar with, hopefully. And this provides an asynchronous mechanism with the host. One, these SQL queues are not only in order or out of order, and these are both in order and out of order. So you could choose either or. Uh, and if you choose an in order SQL queue, this exactly mimics the feature of a CUDA stream, which is 
first in, first out. So Sickle, um, like uh, CUDA has very one-to-one -one mappings. As, as uh, Johannes was talking about uh, some of the active development that goes into the compilers, yes, you can build your own compiler with ease. So this, this, these are the instructions to build on the Perl motor. And there is already a module that one could use as well. So if you just clone, build with the CMake instructions and you'll find the compiler. So this, it, this is as simple as that, uh, but it just takes a while to build it. So just be careful on that. Uh, the, the practical question is, what does it take to port from CUDA to SQL? Uh, and, and, and I'll just briefly touch upon that. CUDA has all, SQL has all the same features as, as CUDA and, and, and there are like, like significant portions of it have one-to-one -one mappings. So uh, it's just, it's just, as I said, like if you see these keywords, these keywords have very familiar namings with OpenCL as well. So people who are familiar with CUDA will be very easy to adapt to the SQL as well. And, and, and the, what is the motivation behind adapting to SQL is, it's a, it's a portable programming model, right? Uh, I'll just briefly touch on the subgroups here. Subgroups are nothing but uh, warps in CUDA. So people who are very familiar with the CUDA warps and, and what it offers, it exactly uh, offers the same features. So, uh, so SQL subgroups map to CUDA warps on the NVIDIA side, and on, on the wave front side, on the AMD side. Uh, so, uh, so the memory model is again, very much similar to CUDA as well. Uh, register shared memory, global memory, if you're familiar with all these terms, it's exactly the same. So uh, there's, the, the learning curve is quite small when you uh, uh, venture into SQL. Uh, I'll just show a simple snapshot of how you allocate memory in CUDA versus how you allocate memory in, 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 in SQL. Uh, most important thing here is, all you need to change here is the GPU, which then runs the entire parallel code on the GPU. So if you choose, if you replace GPU selector with a CPU selector, it would run it on a CPU. So that's the way uh, uh, it touches uh, the different hardwares. So either you could do it in the compile time way, or you could do it in the runtime fashion as well. Uh, so this is like a very textbook example of SQL that I just want to show it to you. Um, um, what does the workflow look like? And and I just want to briefly touch on the buffer memory model that I uh, have introduced at the very starting. So you have standard headers. These are the data structures in SQL. So you have A, B, and C, which are on the host. You just wrap these into SQL buffers. You create a queue because this is the queue that you use to submit work to a device, right? So you use these buffers and then and then just run the paddle for. You need to wait. This is exactly the same like uh, a synchronization point in CUDA. And then you just print that. So that's the simple workflow. And it just boils down to like host code, device code, and device code, host code. Uh, Moving to the US memory model, which offers a slightly familiar feature because buffers are like quite complex and too much code. If you see USM model, you would see all these pointers which you're familiar with. So USM models is nothing but a pointer based model. So you have the data structures, allocate memory, mem copy, launch the kernel, copy the results back and print the uh, results. This workflow is very similar to CUDA and any other GPGPU programming model. So this is the I memory, mean, this is the model that was started as an extension in DPC++ and now it became a part of the standards. Um, I'll just skip uh, this in the sake of time. Um, talking about performance benchmarks. So these are the benchmarks that were carried out uh, in collaboration with Codeplay on Perlmutter. The question is how does CUDA compare with SQL? So as you can see that th this is the Babel stream uh, benchmark that is heavily used uh, these days uh, on different hardwares, different programming models. You can see in, in most of the cases, if you compare blue and, 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 and orange, it's almost very comparable. And, and, and the Lulish is, is one of the, uh, the, the, the meaning apps that you just talked about uh, from Jeff Larkin. Um, uh, uh, 
and so you can see the difference in performance between crude and sickle. And this is quite old benchmark. So it would starkly in, get improved. Uh, uh, and, and similarly with ours bench and, and D slash, these are some of the other benchmarks as well. As you can see that sickle sometimes beats CUDA performance and, and a very similar performance. So uh, these are some of the benchmarks that we just carry out. And, 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 uh, and, these are, and I should admit that these are quite old and needs to be redone. Um, and, and the story would change uh, quite a lot uh, because there has been uh, quite a bit of improvements. Uh, coming to the practical aspects, uh, I don't know what's happening here. Okay, the question is, how do I port an existing CUDA to SQL? So there is an open source tool which ports a CUDA project. I'm not talking about a single file or a kernel, and that project to SQL, that which could be deployed on different hardwares. This is open source, so feel free to check this out. There is an additional resource if you want to see what are the equivalents in CUDA look like in SQL. Obvious practical question is if I have math libraries, what's the story behind that? Uh, so one MPL is is a part of the EPC plus plus. One MPL is nothing but one math kernel library. This works on multiple backends. So for NVIDIA, you could use one MPL APIs, but it just piggybacks on the standard CUDA libraries. The same goes for AMD. So it's the same performance. There is nothing different in the performance or a performance hit that you observe. Uh, and, and that's pretty much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah. Thanks, Abhishek. Uh, I think there is a question in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, are these benchmarks using buffer or the USM model? So, okay, these benchmarks were performed with the USM memory model um, uh, because uh, buffer model is quite outdated by now, I would, if, I, if I should say. Uh, yes, I, 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 I do agree that it's, it's, it's very bad uh, to not show the plots with the, that starts with zero. And I apologize for that, <laughs> uh, for this little performance. Uh, yes. Uh, Yeah, uh, yes, I agree. Uh, so the, the, the discussion is, uh, it would have been a much better uh, showcase of performance when it, if it starts with zero, because much of these are quite compared for the lish. Uh, any other questions? Sorry about the, the background noise. Yeah. 